there is an indefinable, mysterious power that pervades everything. I feel it, though I do not see it. It is this unseen power which makes itself felt and yet defies all proof, because it is so unlike all that I perceive through my senses. It transcends the senses, but it is possible to reason out the existence of God to a limited extent. Even in ordinary affairs, we know that people do not know who rules or why and how he rules. And yet they know that there is a power that certainly rules. In my tour last year in Mysore, I met many poor villagers. In 1947, Mohandas K. Gandhi led India to their independence from Great Britain. He faced many challenges throughout his journey, like being imprisoned. Many people did not agree with Gandhi's fight for freedom because it created conflict with citizens of India, so he had to stay strong in what he believed in. He took action by putting together a peaceful protest called the Salt March in 1929. Although thousands of people were imprisoned, the protest was successful and India gained their independence. Gandhi's actions inspired other powerful leaders like Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King Jr. to use nonviolent protests as well. During the 1800s, imperialism was very common and many countries were trying to gain power, especially Britain. Imperialism is the act of a country extending its power by gaining territories. After the British lost their first empire to the Americans, they turned their attention to Asia and Africa. In the 17th century, British merchants went to India to trade. They gradually took over the country, and in 1858, the British made it official that they ruled India. This brought more British people to India and also caused the princes of India to have very limited power. Mohandas Gandhi was born on October 2nd, 1869 in the city of Porbandar in western India. His parents were very wealthy and he had many brothers and sisters. He grew up in a country that was ruled by British government. When Gandhi was 19, he took a seven-week trip to England to enroll at the Inner Temple. The Inner Temple is where he trained to be a lawyer. Gandhi wanted to be like an Englishman, so he dressed like them and moved into an inexpensive room. While there, Gandhi studied Roman law in the origin Latin. On June 10th, Gandhi passed his examinations, but he wasn't qualified to work in the British Empire. After Gandhi was called to South Africa by the members of his caste to settle a business dispute, he ended up staying for 20 years. So Gandhi went back to India, giving up on being a lawyer to become a political agitator. The 20 years Gandhi experienced in South Africa created a very important chapter in his life. When he was in South Africa, there was a time when he bought a ticket in a first class compartment on a train. Due to his race, a white man entered the first class compartment and ordered for Gandhi to be removed from first class. The railway officers then told Gandhi to move, but he refused. This resulted in a white police officer pushing him out of the train and throwing his luggage. Gandhi was furious, but learned that it is important that you fight for your own rights. After, he led successful campaigns and claimed to be the Magna Carta of Indian Liberty. He felt that his duty in South Africa was fulfilled. In 1929, Gandhi led a very unusual, non-violent protest called the Salt March. During this protest, Gandhi and his 78 followers marched to the coast and gathered salt from the shore. They also burned British cloth and went on strike. Even salt, a basic necessity of life, was not a given. It was being heavily taxed by their British rulers. Indians could be thrown into jail for making or selling this preservative. On March 12th, Gandhi set out on a 240-mile trek across western India to the sea. For 23 days, they marched and thousands of countrymen joined along the way. They walked roughly 11 miles per day. Gandhi stopped at dozens of villages along the way to tell people the importance of the salt taxes. The line of protesters reached over two miles long. Once they got to the sea, they broke the law and started collecting salt, and soon people all over India were making their own salt. Because of this, the British rule imprisoned over 60,000 Indians, 
for this illegal activity, including Gandhi himself. But due to the amount of people in jail, they had to release the protesters. This march was a great success, and India finally became free from Britain. Although, the British were frustrated, so they would beat the Indians, but Gandhi's followers were not allowed to fight back, which resulted in them getting put into jail. Gandhi helped India gain independence by sacrificing his own freedom by being put into jail many times and putting himself in danger. After India gained its independence, the British and even some Indians were upset with the change. Many Indians were fine with how they were living and did not want to change. Following India's independence, a major change was Indians didn't have to carry identification cards anymore. They also had to create a new government. India was newly governed by Jawaharlal Nehru and the Congress Party. They believed in social reformment, economic development, and the preservation of civil rights and democracy. Gandhi was a very respected man that inspired many people. He had a whole new idea of nonviolent protests that people thought was unique. Martin Luther King Jr. is someone that we all know very well that used the method of peaceful protest. Just like Gandhi, Martin Luther wanted to take action in something he felt very strongly about, but in a nonviolent way. He was fighting for African Americans to be treated more equally and for their civil rights. Today, we are still seeing peaceful protests, such as the women's marches to protest Donald Trump's inauguration, which took place all across the US. There were somewhere between 3.3 million and 4.6 million people that made their point known. Another example of a peaceful protest is the National School Walkout. Organizers are encouraging teachers, students, administrators, parents, and allies to walk for 17 minutes, one for every person killed by an uncontrolled gunman during a school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. They are walking for school safety and gun control. This protest has spread to social media and many are using the hashtag enough to spread awareness. There were many conflicts Gandhi and his followers went through to help gain India's independence. Being peaceful protesters was not an easy task. They were looked down on by the British and had to express themselves even with dangerous circumstances. Britain didn't want to fight anymore, so as a result of this, India gained their independence. This meant that they could now make their own decisions and have more freedom in life. Nathuram Vinay Godse ended Gandhi's life on January 30, 1948, in New Delhi at the Birla House, firing three shots to his heart and killing him. Nathuram was a Hindu fanatic that was linked to the right-wing political movements. Over two million people came together to celebrate Gandhi's life on a five-mile walk from Birla House, where Gandhi was assassinated, to Rayagat. This walk to honor and celebrate Gandhi took over five hours to complete. Gandhi's life was full of ups and downs that made him into who he is now known to be. A big part of Gandhi's legacy was his belief that the core of every religion is truth and love. All he wanted was peace and for everyone to come together and get along. His inspiration on other leaders is still making a huge difference today. There is no doubt that Gandhi made a remarkable impact on India and many other people. As Gandhi once said, be the change you want to see in the world.